This week, racing takes a break. And then American Muscle. And more B8s! Racers, what's up and welcome back to this week's Built Lab Kuro's Race Recon, where we're going to get you up to speed with everything going on in Forza Motorsport and the world of racing. There are no major updates happening to the game this week. We're in the middle of the update six cycle and should be expecting to hear something within the next two weeks regarding update seven. In the broader community, it's actually going to be a little quiet this week as it's coming up on the Easter weekend and a lot of communities are taking the week off. From the Blown Pistons Motorsports community, they've wrapped up their first season of their Time Attack series. I was able to eke out a, I think, eighth? Eighth. Yeah, I managed to like squeak up to eighth. Or at least I was eighth as of week four. And don't we think that week four of a week six series is perfectly legitimate for counting? Uh, we'll see what final standings shake out to be once all the tables are updated and all the points are assigned. Uh, but congratulations to everyone that, that participated, and I'm looking forward to the next season of events that's to come forward. Uh, they've also hosted a number of racing events, so be sure to go join the forums so that you can take part in all the racing and all the fun. IFIA this past weekend wrapped up his third round at Laguna Seca and will be resuming on April the 6th with the Briar Speed Tour at Grand Oak Speedway. The series will then continue charging on strong through through the end of May, taking out the final seven rounds. So tune in and watch me improve. This last race I did on my wheel for the first time, and I didn't cause a major incident, though unfortunately I did suffer a crash. Uh, I'll have sort of my thoughts wrapped up soonish. I'm working on a couple different things in the background. Hopefully I'm not making any more promises that I can't live up to. <laughs> Over in the one hour racing community, they're preparing for their V8 supercar season. The V8 supercar season is expected to kick off in the coming weeks after the Easter holiday. An open practice was conducted over the previous weekend to see how the balance of the cars was working out. Everything seems to be hammered out and details for the final build should be released in the near future. In the run up to the season, they're taking open suggestions on what track the event should be run on. The one hour of racing community is also conducting a livery contest. Winners can win upwards of 150,000 credits in game and be able to be included in promotional materials for the racing series. Designs don't have to be directly related to one hour of racing, but should just be on the, on the suggested cars. So I look forward to seeing you take part in the V8 supercar series. I'll be out there racing as well when the series starts up. And now we move on to real world racing. Starting off at the Pinnacle Motorsports, we start off with F1. And once again, we have Max Verstappen on pole position and we have Max Verstappen not finishing the race. So it would have seemed to be, it would seem like we would have an exciting weekend, wouldn't it? But no, Albert Park failed to provide an interesting race. Let's talk about the big story of the weekend. Over the preceding weeks, the story of Williams just total team dysfunction has been spreading out through the news. And the echoes of that were felt down in Albert Park. When, with Alex Albon crashing his car during practice, a team was unable to repair his car or get one together out of the spare parts that they had had shipped down to Australia. So the decision was made to take Logan Sargent's car and hand it over to Alex Albon since they considered he was more likely to take points out of the competition, which irony will strike later. But with Logan Sargent sitting out the weekend, the field was down one car from the beginning of the race. And quickly thereafter, mechanical issues would roll their way through the field with Max Verstappen being dropped out of the race first due to a fire in the rear brakes of his car. One could say like father, like son. And eventually Lewis Hamilton, who had been unhappy with the overall condition of the car throughout the weekend, failing due to power plant, what appear to be power plant issues. The race's attrition would continue as George Russell found the barriers and ended up in a scary situation nearly upside down in the middle of the track. The circumstances of how he would come to find himself in that situation are kind of debatable right now, but Fernando Alonso would find himself with a penalty after the race, as the stewards would say that he drove unusually in a manner which would cause danger to drivers behind him. After all the attrition, Ferrari would find themselves with a 1-2 finish. At the top of the podium, we have Carlos Sainz currently driveless for 2025, the rumor mill immediately starts spinning up with competing teams wanting to pull him in for the next season. The podium will be rounded out by Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris. And now on from F1 to the Let Them Eat Cake special from the desert. IndyCar would find themselves this weekend at the exclusive Thermal Club in California. The Thermal Club bills itself as an exclusive community for auto enthusiasts, but uh, it, it's, it's Richie Rich likes to take his car on to the special track that is also his driveway. This event was the first uh, this event was the first non points paying event IndyCar has done in some years and they were offering and they were enticing the drivers to come and take part in this let's just call unique format uh, by 
by billing it as the million dollar special. The total purse for the Indy race summed up to somewhere in the somewhere in the range of $1.7 million, with first place winners taking home $500,000 and then trickling down to $23,000 for all other competitors. The format was a choice. Uh, split up into heats of two, there was a overall qualifying round, and then the best six from each rounds were then... The best six from each rounds were then combined into an all-star race, and it was fine. Like, for an all-star format, that would be a great idea for maybe later in the season when the teams have kind of gone through some attrition and we are we need a break as we're getting ready to go into the final stint of the year. But a uh, opening all-star race for the season is a choice. The race was fine. There were a few moments. Grosjean continued to be uh Grosjean continued to be the most unlucky man by being in the wrong place at the wrong time once again. And it was a pace race. Uh, the teams quickly found out that you could stay on the lead lap, uh, even if you're 10 seconds down from the lap leader. They would just conserve tires and fuel until they were ready to be in a position to strike. And this did lead to like some large lunges across the field, but it was a lot of pacing and a lot of waiting for very little action. We'll see if they decide to do it again or if they can figure out a way to make it a better a better show. Unfortunately, the track layout for Thermal looks sort of like the Caesar Palace Grand Prix track, so it's it's not exactly the most exciting field to race on. So we'll rejoin IndyCar at the Long Beach Grand Prix on the weekend of April 21st, along with IMSA, who will be racing there as well. And continuing the trend of high stakes, low energy racing this weekend, we have NASCAR at Coda, which is normally something I look forward to every year. But this year, just... A load of mess happening in the midfield just soured my overall takeaways from the race. Uh, I was really excited to see some big names, particularly Kamui Kobayashi, taking on the field. But unfortunately, he got wrapped up in the midfield and spun around several times and wasn't able to really put out a strong showing on the track. Yeah, rubbing's racing in NASCAR. Yeah, a little argy-bargy and like getting into each other is a thing. But it was just pretty unsportsmanlike conduct that was going on and it made coda kind of a hard race to watch this year looking forward to the races coming up this weekend we only have nascar and after that we'll be rejoining f1 in japan on the week of april 5th we'll be resuming with imsa and indycar at the long beach grand prix on the weekend of the 21st we also have uh, the wc returning on the weekend of april 21st with the six hours of imola strap in april is shaping up to be a, a fun ride and now to this week in Forza, starting off with the car pass, we're picking up a brand new contestant for the Forza GT category in the Vassar Sullivan Lexus RCF. What was seen as a car to beat in the GT3 category in the coming year, it suffered a crushing setback at the 24 hours of Daytona, but went on to prove the chassis still had some good endurance on it when it went out and, and performed admirably at the Qatar 1812. This strong performance would continue on to the 12 hours of Sebring, and now you can try your hand behind the wheel. The car brings the Lexus-derived 5-liter V8 engine an aggressive styling into the category, and I, for one, look forward to taking it out there. Uh, I'm not biased at all. My wife totally doesn't drive a Lexus. And now for the featured multiplayer. This week, we return back to the old days of Le Mans. In a time before chicanes, we are out again in the vintage Le Mans prototypes, ranging from legends including the 4GT and GT Mach 2 and their counterpart Ferraris to the, to the earlier Lotus and Shelby Super Snake. The category is always a fun reminder of motoring times past. That is, if you can keep the wheels underneath you, don't forget the older cars in the category are an absolute handful to drive, but can be but can be rocket ships in the right hands. In this week's spotlight, we have the 1969 Charger RT, a true legend of American muscle. The Charger RT represented Dodge's answer to what happens when you take a family sedan, slap it only with two doors, and throw the biggest motor you can at the problem. The car starting off in D-Class is a bit of a boat. It, the suspension is super floaty, you're going to have to deal with a lot of body roll, but the loads of power are plenty to get you out of any sort of trouble. But more enticingly, this week's open cylinder challenge is 8 cylinders in A-Class, and this car along with its other retro muscle counterparts is a beauty to strip out, tune up, and slam to the ground and make haul ass around every corner you can. But me personally, I'm more of a 4 guy over Mopar. While the muscle cars are fun options to take up into the A-Class, they're not exactly the most performant ones. 
Focusing in on the A-Class Rivals data, we see that our eight-cylinder Challengers include the Exomotive Exoset from 2018, the Mercury Cougar, which has surprisingly found its way sprinting up the ranks, the 1970s Camaro, along with other similar muscle cars has competed well in Le Mans, and the Shelby Cobra 427, all set as strong contestants to bring the V8 power to the A category. I'm excited to see what creative options people find to put into the category. I, for one, will be looking forward to testing out uh, a GT350R that I've been working on, of course, a D tuned version of my uh, SGT car I've been running. And if I can figure it out, either a V8 Miata or a V8 NSX, we'll see what I have time to work on. I'll also be trying to do some testing with the Vassar Sullivan Lexus. So we got to squeeze all that in there. Our other open challenge for this week is the C-Class. And as per usual, the class hasn't moved a whole lot. Uh, and we still remain with the MX-5 at, at the top of the category. Other primary contestants include the Civic from 1997 and the Corolla from 1974, taking on more power hungry and, uh, and aero-sensitive tracks. So I once again wanna thank you all for stopping in for this week's Race Recon. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Be sure to keep your eyes out for future videos regarding the tuning of the uh, of the new Forza GT Challenger and the Vassar Sullivan Lexus Quick Tune video and uh, any other content I'm able to get out. Uh, probably no racing streams this weekend as uh, everything's on hold and I'll see you on the next one. So remember, race safe, race smart. We're out.